Hi everybody, this is Janet D, the PT. I'm a physical therapist from the Chicagoland suburbs. I'm the owner of Direct Mobile PT and Wellness and a certified joint hab fitness instructor. I specialize in senior fitness, home modifications, and health advocacy so you can live life on your terms, either at your home or in a communal living scenario. Okay, I am thrilled to present Joint Hab Fitness for the Arthritis Foundation. As a physical therapist, these exercises are fantastic for people of all levels and abilities. I use them daily with my clients and they're joint friendly. The equipment that you will need for our video includes a small ball, if you don't have one, one of these, grab a pillow. You can use a light weight or a soup can. Grab a towel, okay? I have a yoga belt. If you don't have a yoga belt, you can use your robe belt, a men's belt, you know, something, something solid with a strap, and then exercise resistance bands. Now, if you've seen a physical therapist before, you probably already have these lying around the house. So go ahead, pull them out, shake the dust off, okay? And then we're gonna get going. So again, I am Janet D, a licensed physical therapist. I'm the owner of Direct Mobile PT and Wellness and a certified joint hab fitness instructor. Okay, let's get started. Hi everyone, this is Janet D, the PT. As a licensed physical therapist from the Chicagoland suburbs, I'm the owner of Direct Mobile PT and Wellness. I'm also certified with as a joint hab fitness instructor. And we are going to run through our warm up right now. Okay? So let's just do a couple shoulder rolls. You can go backwards, you can go forwards. Okay? So just about a set of four. So the whole point of this warm up is to start slow to get our bodies ready for the exercise, okay? Now we're gonna do a little shoulder squeeze. So I like to have my hands and my elbows tucked next to me as I'm squeezing my shoulders. For the ladies, it's all about sticking your chest out, okay, out and up to get those shoulder squeezes, okay. Our next one is just gonna be letting our head drop to our shoulders. So we're not bringing our shoulder to the head. We are just letting our head drop to our shoulder, starting out slow and relaxed as we're going. And so you're gonna feel this really nice stretch from your neck down into your shoulder, okay? This is a great way to start your day. This is a great way to shake out that stiffness that you tend to feel first thing in the morning because of arthritis, right? So a lot of these exercises you can even incorporate throughout the day, even sitting around just to kind of loosen yourself up. Okay, our next one we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our shoulder back and we're gonna look and follow our hands. Okay, so a nice big round circle and watching where our hand is going. Okay, so we're gonna do a set of four. Good, 
Next thing we're going to do is you're going to grab the chair and you're just going to kind of let yourself slide down. Okay. And then we're going to switch. You always want to come back to the center when you're getting ready to alternate your movements. If you go too fast, then your muscles are gonna get her herky jerky on you. They're really not gonna like it. Okay. But as we're saying, the importance is to start slowly and provide this dynamic stretching warm up. Okay. So as we're doing these exercises, it's important that we get that dynamic stretch because that's really how our body is intended to move. Not just to go in a position and hold it, that, that doesn't apply to our real life. So this, that's the importance of a dynamic stretch. Okay, so our next one, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand to the opposite knee. With the other hand, you're gonna grab the chair and you're just gonna get a nice trunk twist, okay? So that's a little bit of a tongue twister, okay? Always come back to the center, reset. So the hand on the back of the chair, the other hand on the knee. You're gonna look over your shoulder, okay? And then we're going to switch. All right. Fantastic. Okay. The next one we're going to do is going to be a bicep curl with a kick. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to alternate between our right and the left. And the importance of alternating is so then that way one side doesn't feel like it's getting attacked when we're really just trying to get things warmed up, okay? So we're gonna do a bicep curl and our kick. You can even count how many seconds it takes to come up and to come down. The importance of starting slowly is so then that we're, we're actually isolating the muscles that we intend on using versus letting the power hitter muscles kind of take over. And you know, that leads to a lot of cheating and compensation. Okay, our next one is gonna be, we're gonna do that bicep curl, but this time we're gonna, we're gonna add in our hands. So we can get arthritis in our hands. And so it's still essential that we, be able to move these fingers to maintain that flexibility. So as we're doing the bicep curl, we're gonna have our hands in a fist. And as our arms come down, we're gonna open our hands. Good. And then we're gonna curl back up and come out. Okay, you can even do a four count. So you can breathe in, one, two, three, four, and a four count, one, two, three, four. Good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay, our next one is going to be moving our ankles and our arms at the same time. All right, so we're gonna be bringing our toes up and bringing our arms out to the side. And then as our arms come back in, we're gonna stand up or push up off our toes, okay? So let's go through that again. So we're gonna do toes up and arms out to the side. Coming back in, you're gonna go up on your toes, okay? Ready? So toes up, arms out, bring them back in, 
up on our toes. Let's do it again. So we're rocking our feet and rocking our arms and just trying to go through a very pain-free motion, okay? These exercises are just meant to warm up your joints. Nothing is really meant to be painful or, or uncomfortable. There is slight discomfort that can happen just because you're starting an exercise program, okay? But there's a difference between being slightly uncomfortable and having pain, okay? If you have just a dull ache, Guess what? Your body is saying, hey, we moved today. If something is sharp shooting and stabbing, whoo, that, that's a call for concern. So definitely reach out to a physical therapist and your doctor to let them know that something else might be brewing. Okay, so let's do some standing exercises. All right, so holding on to our chair, or you can be holding on to the kitchen counter, we're gonna start with marches. So you're gonna alternate your marches, trying to bring them up as high as you can. And we're just warming up. So nothing should be painful. A few cracks might happen from your joints, but they're just moving. Okay, your next one is going to be doing a hip extension. So we're going to be kicking our leg back. Okay. All right. So one of the first things I love to do in the morning is to actually drink water. So anybody who knows me knows how much I love water and just the benefits that water has for our health. Okay, now we're going to be doing a little side step. So we're going to be going out to the side. So a little side step action and switch. Okay, side step and switch. So getting back to that water and why it is so important for us is because it really starts to lubricate our joints and gets our organs working at a higher level. So then that way we can be efficient and enjoyable for the day. Okay, we do tend to lose a lot of water from, uh, you know, going to the washroom <laughs> and just getting going. So the importance of water really does to lubricate our joints and just for our day. So I usually recommend drinking half of your body weight in water every day. Yes, and I, I get it, okay? Some of these guys are like 200, 300 pounds. You're telling me, yes, I am telling you to be drinking like a hundred ounces of water to keep your body up and moving at the most efficient rate. Yes, and you wanna know something? You might be surprised how you feel by drinking all that water, okay? So test it out, let me know what you think. All right, so that was our warm up. And let's get started. Let's get into our exercise routine. So we're going to do a few combo exercises in each section. So it's going to include a lower body, an upper body, and a stretch, okay? That's what makes these exercises so fantastic and great for everyone of all ages, all levels, and abilities. Ready? So we're going to start with our kick. Okay, so we're going to alternate. Take your time bringing your leg up. 
You want to make sure that you are moving slow so then the right muscles are doing the work. Okay, next one is going to be, I like to do a thumbs up because where my thumb is going, that's where my arm is going. All right, so we're going to just bring our arms up just to shoulder height. We're going to do a set of four. So especially for people who have arthritis in their shoulders, it is totally okay to do shoulder exercises within your pain-free range. Okay, so if you are only able to tolerate exercises up to your shoulder height, that's fine, but let's keep moving. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is a shoulder across the body stretch. Okay, so we're gonna take the one hand, cross over, and the other hand supports. So we try to support a little bit above the elbow. You don't want to hold on to the joints because the whole point of these exercises is not to cause any joint pain. Okay, so this is why it is so important as a physical therapist to lead through these safe exercises, especially for people who have arthritis. Okay, because as a physical therapist, I am well aware of the joint pain and swelling that you might already be feeling just from your arthritis, okay? Okay, so we're going to switch into our next combo of exercises, okay? Okay, for this next set of combo exercises, you're going to need a towel and your light weight. Okay, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see the motion, but you know, sitting in your chair, you can be nice and comfortable. First thing we're going to do, we're going to do a hamstring curl with the towel. So I'm going to toss the towel on the ground. Okay, I'm going to turn. I'm turning sideways in my chair, but you can be comfortable in your chair as is. I'm gonna put my heel into the towel. I'm gonna dig my heel into the towel and then bring the towel towards the chair and slide back out. All right, we're gonna do it again. Dig my heel into the towel and slide it back. Okay. Now I'm gonna swing over to the other side, right? Because we always have to take care of both sides. So now I'm gonna work on my right one. I'm gonna dig my heel and bend my knee. Trying to keep an upright posture in the meantime. Okay, because we really want to be activating these muscles to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, even if we can't hold that position for the length of the day, okay? It's still important that we try to train our body to know what way it's supposed to be going, okay? So our next one, we're gonna take that light weight, we're gonna tuck it in our hands, we're going to hinge at the hips. So we're not bending at the back. So this is bending at the back. We're going to bend at the hips, a hip hinge. We're gonna take the weight, we're gonna tuck our elbow in, and then we're gonna kick that weight out. Okay, you should be feeling it right here at the top of the back of the arm. So in your tricep, okay. This is a fantastic exercise. If you have trouble with this one, let me show you what else you can do. Okay, so we're switching to the other arm. Hip hinge, keeping my back nice and tall and straight. Okay, if I can't do this, I'm going to swing my arm back. So it is really important 
important that we be able to have this motion to keep our joints lubricated and moving within that pain-free range, okay? There are so many ways to do these exercises. I'm just here to show them to you. Okay, so our next exercise is going to be a hamstring stretch. Okay, so again, we're going to um, do a hip hinge. So we're not bending at the back, we're bending at the hips. I'm going to kick that leg out on that heel. And I'm just going to put a little bit of my weight forward, okay? And for my family and friends that know me, my hamstrings are already feeling this stretch and it doesn't even look like I'm doing much, but I feel it. Okay, so just feeling this stretch, holding it for about 10, 15 seconds. I love to uh, sing and talk when I exercise. So if you like doing the same thing, you could definitely get through couple of beats of the music. Okay, now we're going to be switching to the other side. All right, so my leg is nice and straight. Toes are up, hinging at the hips. Okay. And you can really feel that stretch in the back of your leg while maintaining a straight back. Okay, it's all about the posture, baby. Okay, it's so important that we try to train our body to know how to sit and stand. All right, we're gonna go into our next exercise combo. Okay, this next exercise combo is gonna be standing. Okay, but we still have our chair nearby. Okay, so we're gonna hold on to our chair or our counter or table, okay? And we're gonna kick out to the side, alternating legs. So again, kicking out to the side, alternating legs, couple reps, trying to keep the top half straight and our bottom half is going out to the side. Okay, if you start to go like this, or like this, you're going too high, okay? You can, you can do a lower kick. Guess what, you're still working the muscle, okay? All right, our next exercise, we're gonna have our thumbs up, and we're gonna pull our arms back, okay? So if you have an, a wall nearby, got your arms out and you're going to push your arms into the wall, okay? So pulling our arms back. Just working a different shoulder and trunk muscle by doing this, okay? Our next exercise is going to be with our chair. You can use a chair, table, uh, counter, okay? You're gonna hold on, you're gonna step back, okay? And you're just gonna lean into the stretch, okay? And you're gonna be bringing your chin down, okay? Gonna hold the stretch for about 10, 15 seconds. And the reason why these exercises are great for people of all ages and abilities is because gosh, that felt really good for me. It's stretching all these muscles of the trunk and going into our shoulder. And really how often are we stretching those, especially if we're sitting in a chair or at a computer, okay? Or reaching for other items. It is great to get 
that stretch using the chair. Okay, so about 10, 15 seconds. Come back up. All right, we're gonna go to the next exercise combo. All right, for this next exercise combo, you're gonna need your ball or a pillow. Okay, so we're gonna start by bringing our feet close together. We're gonna to put the ball in between our thighs. Okay, we're gonna squeeze the ball for about three to five seconds and then release. We're gonna squeeze the ball for three to five seconds and then release. So we're gonna do a set of four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. One more. All right, so why is this exercise so important? Well, guess what? It helps you um, have the stability, that hip stability to help with squatting down into chairs, onto the toilet, okay? This exercise also helps with pelvic control. And that's something that no matter what age, we could all use and benefit from some hip stability and exercises. Okay, for our next one, we're gonna put the ball to the side. We're gonna do thumbs up. And this time we're gonna make a V with our arms. Okay. So we're gonna take about three seconds to go up, three seconds to come back down. Okay, we're gonna do two more as a V. Okay. And then we're gonna switch to coming a little bit more out to the side. So again, doing about one, two, three, four, coming about shoulder height, one, two, three, four, coming back down. It's all about having that control. This is teaching our shoulder to handle all these different directions that we need it to do in order to lift and reach for objects at different heights and directions, okay? Our next exercise is going to be stretching the inner thigh. So for some people who are pretty tight on the inside of the hips, they will feel a pretty good stretch just by bringing the leg out to the side. Okay, you'll feel that stretch here. And you could feel it a little bit over on this side. Okay. For some people who are a little bit more flexible, okay, we're gonna go into a figure four. So you're gonna have the opposite leg straight. You're gonna bring the one leg over. So you're gonna cross your feet. And then you're gonna slide that leg up, okay? For the super flexible ones, then you bend that underneath leg and you push down. Okay, this is called a figure four stretch because if you really think about it, you could actually see the number four in the stretch. So all of our stretches are about 10 to 15 seconds long. You will definitely feel it, but also make sure that your trunk is nice and tall with your posture. Posture check. Sit up nice and tall, okay? When you get out of this stretch, go ahead and um, lengthen the opposite leg, then drop down the leg that was being stretched. Now we're gonna switch. So for the left leg, I'm gonna bring the left leg out to the side. You can see how I still have my posture check. I'm gonna feel the stretch here. 
This leg is, sta is my stabilizer, okay? And what is so great about this exercise is it really helps us to get in to a car, okay? So there's different ways to get in and out of a car, but most people, they tend to get their tush in first and then swing their legs in, right, to sit in the car. Well, that's why we got to make these movements count. All of these exercises serve and have a purpose to what we're doing in real life. We're just making sure that our body is holding up to their end of the bargain. Okay, so now we're going to stretch that left leg. So I'm going to have my right leg straight. I'm going to bring my left foot over and on top of my right leg. I'm going to slide it up. I'm going to feel that stretch already. And then I'm going to bend that stabilizing leg. I'm going to pull down on my knee. And I'm going to feel really good stretch. Keeping my posture nice and tall. Posture check. Nice and tall. Good. Breathing in and out. And how important it is as we're doing these exercises about expanding our chest to be able to get that nice, big, deep uh, breath. All right, we're gonna go into the next exercise combo. Okay, everybody, for this next exercise combo, we need our exercise resistance band, or you can use a belt, just something that's got a little bit of a give to it. Okay, so our first exercise of this exercise combo is going to be a chin tuck. All right, so where does your chin lie? Does, is your chin closer to your chest? Is your chin out like a turtle? Is it pointing up? Where is your chin naturally? Okay, so first off, we have to find, okay, let's get ourselves into neutral, okay? So let's get ourselves where our chin is pretty even with, if I turn with my shoulder, okay? So what is a chin tuck? So we're gonna take my chin, and I'm not gonna tuck it down, I'm actually gonna tuck it backwards, okay? Like this. All right, so this chin tuck is great for maintaining the motion we need in our neck, right? And to help minimize that, that bump that we can get in at the upper top of our neck. So if you imagine my hoodie part is where the bubble is that some people gain from their posture. Doing this chin tuck is a fantastic way to combat that posture, right? Okay, so a great visual is to think that somebody is coming at you to give you a kiss. And you wanna know something? They have really bad breath or you just don't feel like kissing them. Okay, so this is a great way to get that chin tuck. You can also look at something on the wall and try to keep it even in your eyesight. And you're just bringing your chin, you're tucking your chin back. Okay, our next exercise is gonna be with the band. So we're going to have our palms up, the band in our hand, and we're going to bring it out to the side. So you see how my elbows are tucked in and I'm bringing it out, bringing my hands out to the side. Okay. So this is working on our shoulders, right? 
This is great again for our posture and being able to help with that movement within the shoulder for things that we are reaching for, okay? Um, so our next one is going to be a pec stretch. So our pectoris muscle, so if you take your hand and you put it kind of like you're doing um, for the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? So you're putting your hand on your chest, right? So that is pretty much where your pec muscle is. And this one is so important to stretch. So we're going to stretch it in multiple directions. Okay, so we're going to bring it. And again, go through a pain-free range. Okay, and the reason why this pec muscle is so important to stretch is because it, it actually helps us to keep our upright posture. It helps us with breathing, which a lot of people, as they unfortunately get older, they tend to curl up. So by stretching this muscle, it helps them to sit up nice and tall, expand that chest, so then that way they can take a bigger, deeper breath, but it also helps with us being able to reach for things on the nightstand. You ever, you ever lay down in bed and you're like, oh, I have to put the remote or my glasses on that nightstand. Guess what muscles helping you do it? Your pecs. So you'll be reaching over to your nightstand, pulling up the covers. Though this is that muscle that is the driver for those important actions. Okay. So just getting a really great, fantastic stretch. All right, on to the next exercise combo. All right, for this next exercise combo, you're going to need your light weight. But first, we're going to rest it on the chair, and we're going to do a standing exercise. All right, so we're going to start with a mini squat. So hold on to your counter, your chair, and we're just going to keep our feet shoulder width apart, okay? And we're going to just come down a little bit and push through our legs up. So again, we're going to stick our butt out, squat down. Push through our feet and then bring our pelvis back to center. Okay, so this is really important to emphasize that nice tall posture. So stick your butt out, come down just a little bit, push through your feet to stand up nice and tall. So what you want to be feeling when you're doing this mini squat is, okay, I know you're concerned about your knees. Guess what? By shifting your weight back, your knees should not be feeling that much pain, okay? Because your weight is actually in your heels, in the back, so in your hamstrings, and in your tush. So then you're going to be pushing through your heels to be standing nice and tall. Okay, our next exercise is going to be with that light weight. We're gonna hold on to the back of the chair. We're gonna drop, we're gonna drop the weight down. We're gonna drop that shoulder down. Our feet are gonna be hip width apart or shoulder width apart, okay? And we're just going to do a light circle. This is counterclockwise. And then you're gonna do clockwise. So just a set of four or five movements, okay? This is a great exercise to warm up your shoulders for the day. Now we're gonna to switch to the other side, okay? All right, 
So we're gonna have our feet hip or shoulder width apart, drop down, keep our back straight, okay? And we're gonna do, this time I'm doing clockwise, a couple times, four or five circles, and then we're gonna go in the opposite direction. Okay. So what's so great about doing this exercise is it really helps our shoulder get used to having that weight, something to carry around, right? Okay, that's, that's so important to everything that we do on a daily basis. Okay, our next one is going to be, we're gonna stretch our hips. We're gonna do it standing. All right, so holding on to the back of our chair, we're gonna have one leg slightly, slight knee in our, uh, slight bend in our knee. Okay, standing nice and tall. Bring our leg, our other leg as far back as you're comfortable with. Okay, because believe me, you're going to feel the stretch. You have to find what is comfortable for you. Okay, and then making sure that we are leaning actually backwards to get that stretch of the hip. So the front of your thigh is going to be feeling that stretch. And it should also be going a little bit higher into the pelvis. Okay, so that is really natural and, and expected with this stretch. Okay, this is a great stretch for all the sitting that we do. So this is something you can do when you've been sitting for a while at an activity or church. You know, before you start to get walking, you could you can tuck this stretch in at church. You want to know something? Nobody would say anything about it. Okay, so we're gonna do the opposite side. So again, a slight bend in the opposite knee. We're gonna lean backwards. You can hold on to the chair if you can. This is great for uh, relieving any back pain that you might be feeling, okay? I mean, this is, this is a fantastic stretch. This is a stretch that I do. This is something that my parents do. This is something that all my clients are recommended to do is to get that stretch in the hips because of all the sitting that we naturally do with other activities. Okay, so we're gonna go on to our next exercise count. We're working towards the end of our exercise program, okay. So this next exercise combo is great stretches and movements for our hands, okay? So just to fight that arthritic hand pain and swelling and stiffness that we will all experience, it is essential that we keep those joints and our hands moving, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start with like we're waving, waving to the grandkids, okay? So waving, okay? We're gonna go now into like a crawl, or this would be a great uh, bear, like a bear claw. Okay, like you're trying to scratch at the trees. My my kids, they love these exercises. I, I wonder what they're gonna think in about 30 years about what their mom did. But um, here we're doing some bear claws. Okay, so open, close, just the tips. You see how it's just the tips? Okay, then we're gonna go back into our wave. So why is it important that we do these stretches for our hands, right? 
These are important to be able to open those medicine bottles, to be able to open those jars, to be able to handle. Next thing we're going to do are our fingertips is to be able to use our keys to open different locks. How to use our phones. You know, those buttons, they, they get smaller, especially on the remotes. I mean, your, your finger ever slip on a remote? Mine, mine has, that's for sure. Okay, next thing we're gonna go into is our forearm stretch. Okay, so we're gonna have a straight arm. The other hand is going to pull the fingers towards me, but I'm not pulling the fingers. I'm pulling from the palm of your hand. Okay, people just tend to think that we're pulling on the fingers, but we're really pulling from your knuckles down here, okay? So about 10, 15 seconds for the stretch, okay? And then we're gonna go over to the other side. So again, a straight arm pulling from the knuckles to get that stretch for about 10 to 15 seconds, okay? All right, so I really hope you enjoy our workout today. Just to recap, these exercises are fantastic for people of all levels and abilities and that they are joint friendly, okay? These are exercises that I can do, that my parents do, that my 90-year-old grandma does, okay? And whew, if you ever meet her, she is a spitfire. Let me tell you, and she does her exercises because can't call her old until she's 93. But that's a whole uh, family joke on that one. All right, so the importance of these exercises is to minimize that stiffness that we can feel in the morning, our joint pain, and be able to lubricate our joints. So then that way we can move more freely in a pain-free range. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this exercise video from Joint Hab Fitness, from me, Janet D., a licensed physical therapist, owner of Direct Mobile PT and Wellness, and thanks to the Arthritis Foundation. All right, see you guys later.